everyone. Let's take a look at what we can do with our Adobe Illustrator files uh, to turn them into artwork. And I've got some very brave and generous people who have given me their files to work with since I haven't had time to draw my own coat of arms. And I'm going to start with Ivan Lambert here and see what we have. Now as you can notice when I open it up it's been blown up to 400 percent. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and make it 100 percent. So this is a one-to-one -one, and you can see all the different things that he's done here. Now when I look at this I see that it looks like it got stretched. And so I'm going to control A, select all of the items on the artboard and bring it back in so it looks a little more like a standard coat of arms. The next thing I'm going to do is notice all of this empty space here. So I'm going to go to my document setup or you can also go over here to file document setup and I'm going to edit the artboards and I'm going to trim off the parts of the artboard that we really don't need so we have a standard look right here. Now I'm going to export this to a Photoshop file and I want to preserve the layers because he's done a very good job of separating the different items, the different elements here. Now there are definitely some things that we're going to be working to fix up but if they're on different layers we have more options and that's what we want. So let's go ahead and do an export, file, export and then choose save as type. We're going to choose the Photoshop format. When we do that we're going to get a second dialog box and we're going to be able to change the resolution of the final Photoshop file based on this number right here. So if we just go, we'll go with two versions. We'll do a high and we want to make sure that we've got right layers selected. Now, however you set up your artboard, if you have it as RGB and you switch it to the other one, then it won't let you write the layers. So it has to stay the same and then you can change the mode once you get into Photoshop. The other thing I like to make sure of is that it's art optimized and it samples things very, very carefully so we get nice smooth lines. I don't think this means too much to us at this point, but make sure you click on write the layers. So that wrote a file. I'm going to do another one while I'm here to show the difference between these two things. So I'm going to do coat of arms and I'm going to call this one the 1200 version because I'm going to bump up parts per inch here and select a much higher number. And that's going to give us a higher resolution image. So let me go over here to Photoshop now and open these. I've got the coat of arms and the coat of arms 1200. And you're going to see that when I look at this one, I'm at 66%. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in, let's say, on the tip of the helm here, which you may think, oh, there's a problem. But the fact is that we can turn that layer off and have the shield underneath. So we'll take a look at that in just a minute. So it's not going to be a problem at all. But look at the pixelation. Okay, that was just exporting with pretty much the default. Now when I bumped up to 1200, when I zoom in on that same part, you'll see that there is no pixelation. So this is why these steps are so important. We don't want this for our coat of arms. We do want something like this. I'm going to close that one and keep this one. Next, I'm going to do some uh, fixing up. So I'm going to turn off the helm. The helm actually looks really good by itself. And one of the things that I'm going to really want you to do is start naming these layers what they're supposed to be. So here we have a couple of symbols. So notice how in this case, since it's two separate paths, they're not connected, that we ended up with a folder with both of those. So let's see. Orderly. I believe that's how you spell it. Forgive me if it's not. Okay, so here we have part of the embellishments on the side. Here's another floor de lis So let me actually turn off all the layers 
and turn on just the parts that are the decorations around the sides. That's part of it, that's part of it, and that's part of it. And I think that's all. So I actually want all of this to be one layer. So all the things that are visible, I'm going to do layer, and instead of merge visible, instead of flatten image, I want to merge visible. Actually, let me go to one of the Chair visible Richardson, layers. Richardson, please come to the attendance office. So let me select one of the layers that's visible. And I'm going to go over here to Layer, Merge, Visible. And now I get one layer, and I'm going to call it Decoration. Not everybody did that. There may be some other things that we can do. But now we've got the helm and the decoration. And let's see what else we have. So this is one of the fleur-de-lis. And it's actually got this extra line. He was dividing his shield and used one of the lines from the fleur-de-lis. So I'm going to use my eraser tool, E for eraser, and I'm simply going to take that off. Now this fleur-de-lis, I could then put into this folder, and I could turn on all three of them at once. So that's a little bit handy there. Then I got the decoration. Then I've got, let's see, this is going to be the name. And then this is the shield. So let's take a look at that shield. And what you'll notice is that with the decoration, he shared some lines. So the shield itself now has some bites taken out of it. So if you've drawn your shield um, and you bring it in at this point, you notice that, then you would be painting in and trying to draw in the shield. So we might think of some other ways of doing that. I'm just going to leave it like that for now, except for one thing. We need a dividing line in between. So I'm going to go ahead and use the line tool and try and draw a line that will divide this shield so we can do two different colors. If I just draw a line on that layer, the weight is very, very thin. So I'm going to bump that up to 20 and try again. So now we have a line that divides the two. It's combined of two shapes. This first shape we don't need, so I'm going to throw it away. And then we want to actually merge the shield and the line together. So once again, I'm going to use the merge visible for the layers. So now that is the entire shield. Now if I zoom in and take a look here, I will notice that if I try and fill with the paint bucket tool, let's say a nice red color, it's actually going to fill in everything except this side because this one, all the lines connected and this one it did not. So to do a little patchwork now is a little tougher than having gone in and just joined those two together. But it is possible to do a little fixer upper by using the eyedropper tool and selecting that color and then use the paintbrush tool maybe increase with the bracket keys to about the right size and then paint that in. Now I probably should not have such a fuzzy brush if I'm going to do that kind of work. So I'm actually going to undo, go to my history here and now with a not so fuzzy brush, hardness all the way, be able to draw that line in there. So since we're here, we might end up doing a little bit of touch-up work if that was important to us. In this case, we've got ourselves a shield. So let's do, um, I don't know what the original colors were. It'd be nice if I had that to go by. But I'm going to use my paint bucket, fill one side in with red, uh, and let's do blue on the other side. Now this is the foreground color and this is the background color. And so if you're working with two colors, you can use this switch and then just fill with the other color if you want to. Now notice this dark blue is not the same as what showed up. That's that mode that we have. It was CMYK, remember? So if I go to image mode and I say, no, no, let's do the standard red, green, blue, 
then it's going to merge layers before the mode change. Let me see what happens. Yep, it merged them all. So that doesn't turn out to be a very good idea. We'll just have to go with those colors for now. All right, so we got the name, the decoration, and the helm. So notice that we can see the color through the helm. So let's do the helm next. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and take a look at this helm and pick a nice grayish color for the helm. So let's go to our paint bucket tool, select the helm layer, and then fill that in. And then I can pick another gray, maybe a darker gray, and fill in this part. Notice that the hole there did not stay empty. So I'm going to do a little fixer upper. Use my brush tool, make it smaller. I'm going to use my eyedropper to get the exact color, and then my brush tool to cover it up right there. Looks like I might have a little trouble with some of the other ones as well. So let's go ahead and do the fill bucket and fill that in as well. So now we have a helm. Whoops. And I've got a nice looking helm that I can have with my decorations and my shield. And I can actually see part of the shield through there. So this is the point where I would begin looking at maybe the fleur-de-lis maybe hiding everything else and seeing if I can't fill some of those in. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the gradient tool. So I'm going to choose my color again because he didn't have super black. He had a kind of dark gray. And I'm going to go to my Fleur de Lis layer. Maybe I have to open it up and go directly on that layer. Maybe I should combine the three of those into one visible layer. What do you think? Layer, merge the visible. Now I don't have all of that. That's a little easier to work with than that folder with little paths inside. So now I'm going to seal up some of these. Maybe use the eraser tool and clean that up a little bit. smaller, clear out some of this space inside. All right, so let's see, a little brush tool, see what we can do with one of these. Oh, looks like a little brush there as well, eraser, looks good, looks good. Okay, so now I want to fill in with a gradient. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to use my magic wand tool and shift click inside all of these areas. And now I'm going to pick a gradient. Fill bucket tool holds the gradient. And we're going to do a two color gradient. How about red and green? Now wherever I draw the line, I'm going to get this gradient. And the length of the gradient makes a difference over where the colors are. So if you're careful with your gradient selection, you can end up with bright red on top and green on the bottom. So that doesn't look too bad to me. And then maybe pick another color for the fill. I'm going to hit X and switch to red. Go to my paint bucket tool. Now I will not be able to fill anything in unless it's inside the selection. So you have to deselect. Select, deselect in order to fill in that color there. That looks kind of uh, not so fancy, but let's go ahead and I'm going to fill that in, each of those middle parts. <laughs> not sure I can hit that one. And now I'm going to try and redo my gradient with the other stuff. So shift, click, click, click. I can do the gradient tool again, lives with the paint bucket, and draw my line. Once again, magic wand, not shift clicking. Now shift, 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 shift. Go back to my gradient tool and draw it. So now I have my three fleur-de-lis 
Control D, deselect, turn on that, and I've got my decorations to go. Now the reason having all of these separate is so nice is because we can do special effects. When you right click on a layer, you get blending options. And blending options will let you do things like bevel and emboss, change the amount of the bevel so it's not too, too obvious. We could do a drop shadow, would be pretty nice. That would make them stand out. You have to click on the words to get the controls and then you can change the distance, how dark it is, how sharp the shadow is, but that actually doesn't look bad at all. Now if I want the same thing for another layer, I can right click and copy the layer style, go to the helm and paste the layer style and now I get the same kind of drop shadow and bevel effect. What I might add to the helm, I think I showed some of you, is an outer glow. We're going to make it a magic helm. So we're going to go to outer glow, choose the color of bright gold and then play with the spread and the size. Okay. There's also inner glow which is kind of interesting as well. We could make an inner glow and different blending modes so we could increase the size of that as well. Just makes it look really kind of cool.